Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I'm going to read some uh, partisan rhetoric. I'm sure it'll be. Uh, this is a bad deal for BC. The fine print of that deal will commit our province to a course that is environmentally reckless, fiscally foolhardy, and socially irresponsible. We should not accept this deal that would enshrine an unprecedented 25 year tax giveaway to state oil companies from Malaysia, China, India, and Brunei, and also to JAPEX. We should not accept this deal that effectively obliges all BC taxpayers to underwrite those companies' risks, as it also pads their profits. We should not be content to let the government sell out British Columbia's long term capacity to appropriately manage, tax, and regulate our most valuable non-renewable resource, or to properly price and minimize the massive greenhouse gas emissions that will result from LNG exports. Nor should we accept that the price for attracting any LNG project is a deal that am amounts to a wholesale sellout of our provincial sovereignty. Yet the Pro Pacific Northwest LNG Project Development Agreement with Petronas and its partners would do all this and more. In its totality, it is a deal that played our government decision makers for, and, uh, and I apologize, Mr. Speaker, but I'm quoting for suckers. Under no circumstances should we effectively consign away our ability to set LNG specific carbon taxes or to impose new environmental regulations aimed at curbing greenhouse gas emissions that will skyrocket because of that industry. Taxpayers should not have to foot the bill for strengthening such industry specific measures and subsidizing companies' profits. There was a time not long ago when the BC Liberal government said it opposed business subsidies. This deal enshrines the worst type of subsidy. It would entrench a guaranteed 25-year tax expenditure that exposes BC taxpayers to unknown future unfunded liabilities that may flow from future needs to strengthen environmental protection. What is the value of that expenditure? We will not know until it becomes our cross to bear. The last thing we should be doing is putting in place long-term guarantees that freeze the rules and costs for pollution and negative environmental impacts in perpetuity. Yet that will be a hard practical consequence of the Pacific Northwest LNG Project Development Agreement. And where does that, where does that come from, Honourable Speaker? It comes from Martin Brown. And who was Martin Brown, Honourable Speaker? Who was that, who was that person, Honourable Speaker? Who was Martin Brown, Honourable Speaker? Well, he was the who was Martin Brown, Honourable Speaker? He was the former BC Premier Gordon Campbell's members. Who Honourable Speaker, I know why this is uncomfortable for the other side. I know why they don't want to hear this. I know why they don't want to hear this. Order. Order, please. Order. Member, continue. <laughs> Martin Brown, Honourable Speaker, was former BC Premier Gordon Campbell's long-serving Chief of Staff. He was the top strategic ad advisor to not one, not two, but three provincial party leaders. He, and he was a former Deputy Minister of Trade and Investment in British Columbia. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, <laughs> Honourable Speaker, he was a proud BC Liberal. So when someone like Martin Brown comes out and in this strong language sets out the problems with this deal, clearly the issues go far beyond the simple story that the other side is telling. And for some reason they are unwilling to listen to these concerns about enshrining this sweetheart deal into a 25-year agreement. Honourable Speaker, I had the opportunity recently to hear a speech from the President of the Panamanian Congress. And I think in Panama and South America there's still a poetry around uh, politics that we haven't seen here for a while. And during his speech, he said, it, Honorable Speaker, <laughs> some remarkable, remarkably disrespectful comments about the Panamanian people in any event. During his speech, he set out the guiding principle by which he governs all of his decisions as a legislature, legislator. And he said, quote, I want to represent my country in a way that I will be my son's hero. That's a remarkable quote. And it's not just poetic, I think that they're inspirational certainly to me as a new father and I know for many people in this place with grandchildren and children and uh, nieces and nephews that they're thinking about the next generation 
when we sit in this place and our role as being heroes to them, that we are setting them up for success in the future. And I think we can all agree there's a considerable natural gas resource in our province. Petronas, at least, according to the uh, government and, and that, that gas company's math, uh, is considering investing 36 billion US dollars to access that resource. It's valuable. It has worth. It belongs to every citizen in British Columbia. And developing it brings with it very real challenges. Environmental challenges, economic challenges, development challenges. So if we put this deal that's being presented to us today against the test that was set out by that very poetic legislator, would our children look at this deal and say, yes, this is a deal that makes you a hero to us because you put our interests, the interests of the next generation forward ahead of your own. I think it's very hard to make the case that it does. From an environmental perspective, we've abandoned measurement of 70% of the emissions of this proposed project. Right now we're seeing record temperatures, wildfires, ocean acidification. What will the world look like for our children as we abandon these regulations, the existing regulations, not even the tough regulations that are coming by international agreement? But beyond that, how will we explain to them that we will need to use public money intended for schools, for hospitals and other public services to subsidize an oil and gas company to subsidize them for regulations we would put in place to control carbon pollution, to control climate change. Does that sound heroic? We are handing over as much as 18 million tons of LNG per year for export and perhaps an additional 25% burn for processing. So what will we get in return from a jobs perspective where we have more young people out of work in school than any other province in Canada this deal presents absolutely no job guarantees for British Columbians. These are basic guarantees that other countries were able to negotiate in their deals. When we hand over a public resource of this size, the least we could do is ensure employment for British Columbians. And even before this deal was presented in the House, Petronas was in the media saying that, quote, finding enough qualified Canadians won't be easy, unquote. Global Mail reported that they were pressuring suppliers to use everything from engineering services to legal services to raw materials sourced from low-cost jurisdictions. In other words, not British Columbia. Could we be any further from heroic at this stage? We know how we got here. The Premier made absurd promises about the LNG industry that she could not deliver, and she couldn't go back to electors without something in hand. She put our province in a terrible negotiating position. So when Petronas threatened to walk away, what happened? Well, the Minister for Natural Gas and the Premier cut the LNG income tax in half. They introduced a new natural gas tax credit to reduce the corporate tax. This is, this is very difficult news for the other side, Mr. Speaker, I know. You can, tell when, you can tell when we're getting close here because the other side gets louder. They can't wait for their turn. They can't wait for their turn to respond. They reduced environmental regulations, restricting greenhouse gas emissions, and they presented an unprecedented 25-year guarantee royalty deal, negotiated at a time when natural gas is at an historic low price. That is what this government is presenting for us to say yes to. Astounding. Handing over. Handing over a public resource for electoral advantage to cover up for promises made that could never be delivered on is a long way from heroic. I believe we should be governing in a way that our children will see us as heroes, for stepping up and ensuring that their generation will be better off than our own, even if that involves temporary sacrifice for ourselves. And what are we being asked to vote on? A deal that sells out the next generation with a locked-in agreement for 25 years at the lowest price for LNG and promises to repay a foreign government crown corporation if we ask them to comply with future environmental standards. A deal imposed over the objections of First Nations. A deal that hands over a massive public resource without job guarantees for British Columbians. And what do we get back? Well, so far, a talking point for when the B.C. Liberal Premier is asked about her unsustainable election promises. I will not be voting for this deal because I wish to represent my community in a way that I will be a hero to my son, 
and to the next generation. And this deal is the complete opposite of that principle. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.